Hey, in this upcoming episode, we actually talk a little bit about Maps Anywhere. That's right. Maps White. That's our equipment-free Maps program based Body on- weight Palooza. Closed chain kinetic movements uh, with our patented AMP, AMP sessions. Uh, it's a four-week, 30-day body weight only, uh, maybe some bands mm. program. We didn't actually file for that patent. You can find it at Mind Pump Media. Mindpumpmedia.com. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Confession here. I don't read your DMs if they're fucking really long. <laughs> <laughs> they sit in my they sit in my inbox for fucking months if I because dude you get so many right so a lot of times yeah. if I see like a good quick question that I can help somebody or answer I answer them as as quick as I possibly can and then when you get so many you get to a point where you ha- some have to just get left alone well the way I choose normally is the longer they are the less likely oh, I'm dude. going to read them right isn't that funny it's just like get to the point really quick you know get to the point I can't read through all this I don't have time so I just got to this one right here I don't know how long it's been sitting does it say how long it's been sitting in my inbox uh, no. are you still enjoying it right now yeah so <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that like <laughs> I don't know what to say well, to tell that. Tell us what happened. Well, yeah. Well, tell she's written me a the lo- one of the longest DMs I've had in a very long time, and it it gives me her backstory. But she's basically reaching out to me to reach out to Bachelorette Ben Zorn. What? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, Bachelor Ben Zorn? What do you mean she's reaching out Dude, to reach? Well, that, I, that's she's so a, funny. That actually happened to me too. Wait, what? Well, well, yes. Dude, our boy Ben needs to step yes, his game up, on dude. On Facebook. Him I and I are having a, gonna have a Ben well, I, Ben listens to the show a lot. Somebody so to, reached out and they Brother, were like, you gotta step Oh your game my up cousin, up. you know, oh, I do you know Ben? Like I heard he was on your show. Do you know him? Like personally? Like can can you hook me up with my cousin? Dude, people are stalkers. You know what they yeah. do when they do that, well, right? Well, the funny part in cause She's like, you know, in the, in the the letter here. That's what you call that, right? Is that a letter? That, it, uh, what do you call days, that? Sure. What do you call what do you call a DM? M- that's message. like, like <laughs> that's oh, not a, long. that's not a message. A message no, 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 to no, me no. Is, is like a Twitter, yeah. a yeah. tweet. Yeah. A message you can't call it a message unless it's as short as a tweet. Yeah. If it's longer than a tweet, it now goes into a new it's category. It's like a novel. Yeah. So the blog. It's a short you, story. Yeah. She, she yeah. sent me a so short. So she wrote you a blog. So what happened? So she she has been listening to Mind Pump for over a year. So I don't want to rag on her too much because she's a fan of Mind Pump. So I love you for that. But I do find it kind of funny that she wrote me this this letter, and I won't oust her. So I no, 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 you, no, you yeah, don't want to do I, that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, throw you under the bus like that. But I have to talk about this because I think it's hilarious. So writes this long old letter telling me, uh, you know, that how long she's been following Mind Pump and this and that. She's got it. She's left us a great review and won a shirt before. And well, that's about to change. And she, <laughs> <laughs> and so. She is. Nobody uh, knows. She's a huge fan of Ben. The way she found us is through Ben Zorn because she's been following Ben Zorn since The Bachelor, and she's you know saw that we're friends and that he's been on the show and he's she's this and that and so she's reaching out to me to help her reach out to him so she doesn't look like one of those crazy girls on his Instagram that all of them that like that are super fans that oh Ben I, I love you I love you have my kids marry me yeah oh like my God. he gets those right like he posts yeah. and right now like I've been I'm been teasing him lately right now because he's got his little Rottweiler pop puppy that he just got, and that's all he posts, and it's just like this little cute shot of him and his dog. Oh, like, yeah. He's like the all-American boy that every- he's such a tease. Every, yeah, he is He is a, a vagina tease. Am I right? So yeah. I'm just going to yeah. let all you he's little hot girls know yeah. that want to sleep with my boy, he is a vagina tease, so <laughs> he's a tease. don't get your- He's a good dude. Yeah, I lo- just, love that guy. You know what that is? So here's what happens. It's like, it's like women follow him. They, they say, watch him on The Bachelorette. They create this alternative- this alternate reality where they and him, if they, oh, if he just met me, I know we'd connect and yeah. we were so similar. And if I could just meet him, he would fall in love with me. Yeah. I know it because I love him. And they like, totally delusional. So well, they Prince, this crazy Prince delusion. Charming syndrome. And they're so delusional, it. in fact, that they'll contact someone else through an indirect way to try and get, like, like what are you going to do? Send her like, his phone I number? I have a chance. Yeah, like you're going to be like, yeah. you know what? 
You said that you message you sent me was. I'm not gonna lie. Do you think, do you think is, a dude would do this? I don't. Is what I'm thinking. Oh, like, you right. know what I mean? Like every girl thinks they have a chance. That's what's they, she doesn't even know he's a goat fucker. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't even. <laughs> what? Mean, yeah. <laughs> My boy's Whoa. a goat fucker. Like you, know, whoa, if you, if, you know what I'm saying? He fucks goats. What do you mean? What does that mean? Wait, wait. Literally? Yeah. He's yeah. a goat Bro, fucker. Adam. I can't say that. Adam. He's my boy. I can say whatever I want. He's a goat. He's a goat fucker. Who fucks goats? Nobody. Ben. Of all the animals. Yeah. Come on, Ben. That's the. That's not. That's at the top of my list of animals. Yeah. Well, I remember the first few times that we would, we would hang one. out together. Were you more? And I'm guy? so gonna put our boy on blast right here. And I remember when we first met. Uh, you know, I had a little like man crush. I'm like, he's gorgeous. Oh, yeah, he like, is. he's totally gorgeous when you meet. He's even more gorgeous in person than he is on TV. I'll tell you guys that right now. Like, so yeah. you meet and him. he's a good guy in real that life. That doesn't help, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not. Hey, he's and he's a good guy. No, in real yeah, life. diverting. People. And he's a super great human being. Yeah, like, he's not. A, he's not a dick or a douche. Or no. Like well, yeah. you could tell. So he wasn't. He was an overweight kid. So you could tell that he was the fat kid who got in shape. And that what's great about that is it, he's built great character. Mm. So he's got. A, he's not like this super hot dude that got on a show and thinks he's a celebrity and walks around. All so cocky. what you want to do if you're looking for someone to date is find someone who used who looks great but used to look bad, and then <laughs> yeah. you're going to get like a that's good, a real recipe. Good character. It is a pretty good recipe. It tends to build care. I think. I think like you meet a hot girl and you're like, hey, do you have any pictures from high school? Yeah. And you look at him like, oh my god, you were massive yeah. Yeah. to date yeah. yeah anybody i think thank god anybody yeah. that went through some sort of like uh, adversity like that as a as a child or a young a young adolescent i think uh builds pretty good character mm -hmm. so yeah. I, and I, and you see some of these kids that were spoiled they're good looking they had all the their things, whole uh, life their whole life and yeah. i feel so or i feel used i to have a lazy eye i actually you know I mean? now as an adult i feel sorry for those same kids as a kid when you're growing up you don't see it as a kid you're growing up you see that kid and he has everything and you're so jealous he's he's smart he's good looking he, he's the best at all the sports he has tons of money has the coolest car at school and you're envious but as an adult I see that and I go, oh, poor kid. You know what? It's poor, kinda, poor kid because life is going to slap him right in the face. It, rem in about it reminds 10 me years. of this. I remember having this conversation with with uh, one of the, these trainers that used to work with me, and she was telling me about this guy that she was dating, and they had been dating for a, like almost like about a month, and they hadn't had sex yet. And she, and I'm like, what do you mean you guys haven't had sex? She's like, well, we've done other things. And I'm like, you've done other things. She's like, yeah. She's like, oh, he's like heavy petting. She goes, he goes, she goes, he goes down on I was, me. I was a heavy petter dude yeah. for a long time. No, no, no. I didn't. Yeah. But, that was my whole junior bro, high career. But bro, this, <laughs> this, she was, she was in her mid thirties, and so with this guy, so they weren't kids. And she goes, yeah, but oh my god, he goes down on me so crazy, like he's so good. And I looked at her, and I'm like, hmm. do you think maybe he's got a small dick? And she goes, oh no. Oh, and Sal. guess what? He Come did. On. Don't oh. give away. Don't give away the moves. He did. Yeah. They went to have sex. That poor, and he had poor a bastard. super, super. Just what she told me. She goes. She, and she said. She goes. I should have known. You know what I mean. So, like <laughs> you're saying, you meet someone. You really had to work on that skill. Super nice. And like Justin said, they probably had a lazy eye or something yeah. at one point. <laughs> so wait a second. So, so, wait, how did you go from that to? Being it just good, reminded me that good at eating he, vagina. He goes straight to small, small dick. Yeah. It just reminded <laughs> yeah. me of that. Like really nice guy used to be uh, fat. Really good at going down. Small dick. <laughs> Wow. It's just one of those. That's what you just put together from yeah. that. Yeah, hmm. I, I definitely, I definitely think that it, it builds I really character. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, I well, you character. sharpen up yeah. other skills. Yeah. That's the point of that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. A, lot of, a lot of science today. A lot of science today. <laughs> hmm. Doug, why do I sound choppy? I feel choppy right now. You guys choppy? Chop, chop, chop. You well, sound good to me. Unbeknownst to you, we slipped a little uh, magic mushrooms in your coffee. Hmm. So you're yo, yo, you're feeling yo. the psychedelics. That's what that is. You know, it's um, goat fucker. It's weird man that someone would call it's the equivalent of going to a person and be like hey i like your friend except way worse <laughs> is it, you know what I mean? yeah it's when like, you're when you're a kid and you're like hey could you go ask out yeah sh oh i know I yeah really like her. totally except way worse yeah. yeah that was the thing back in elementary school you're like hey i like that chick over there hey you want to go like get your friend to tell her that i want to go out and then that friend comes back okay yeah you guys are going out and then oh cool and then you like never talk dude you <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, like, but I'm go we're going out. Ugh. You know what <laughs> I, I did would, that a bunch. You know what you should do, Adam? Hey, were you, you know Can you send her? Can you send her? Of course I could send, send her. her. Why, don't you, why don't you text back? Ben? I'm going to send her. Send he her wants Ben's, to go around. I'm going to send, send her Ben's phone number. He wants I'm to go around. <laughs> with you. Would tell, I'm, yeah. you know what I'm going to do? Actually, I am. Send gonna, her Ben's phone number. I'm going to text Ben. And then right be like, now. hey, listen, I think you might have a shot. Listen. So you I'm going to text it right uh, now. Well, she's actually really cute. Yeah. So. Doesn't mean she's. There's a chance. Maybe, well, maybe she's crazy. You know, maybe Ben's. Well, there's probably a chance she's crazy too, but she's really cute, which. We'll have to verify. Maybe like back in the day, we thought about like, you know, creating this whole like dating thing. You know what? I. 
gonna tell you pre screening the the options for him. I'm gonna take care of you, baby girl. You know what? Because I blasted you on the podcast, you I go. am going to. Ha- I'm gonna front t- row. I'm gonna take uh, six screenshots because that's what it's gonna take for me to show the entire post you sent be like, me. Be like, dude, <laughs> over, over. You gotta really build her up to him. And are you gonna send it to Benny? Yeah. Wait, I don't know. I don't think that's gonna help her. So we're gonna have to. Uh, we have I want to genuinely help her. Okay. You know what? Because I put you on blast on the show, I feel entitled. Not entitled. I feel uh, obligated. 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 Thank you. No problem. He's life, just confusing life, how library. he really feels. <laughs> 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 yeah. What he's supposed to feel. Wrong library. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was thinking of a different word for that. <laughs> Obligatory. <laughs> you know, something. Uh, yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to hook you up, dude. Uh, or honey. I'm going to call. I'm going to call <laughs> my boy. Hook you up, dude. Actually, you know what? Uh, hey, bro. Hey, bro. You know what we're going to do? We're actually going to call Ben right now. Let's see if he answers. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yes, we're going to do that. That's a good. Don't idea. get all mad, that's, Sal. That's just hold on. Good idea. We'll get to. You know what I'm mad about? the bottom. We'll get to the podcast here. Don't oh, worry. Oh, wait. No. You have it, Taylor. You have Fred Durst's phone number. Oh, dude, oh I that's we, who we need to call. I, we need to call him on one of these podcasts. That's who we need I to call. I think that would be amazing. You know what you should do? You should hook her up with Fred Durst. That's what. That's exactly it. Yeah, like, right. like, you know, Ben's taken. Hey. Yeah. yeah. We got a second option for you. Are you on the phone? Right B, now? can you hear me? Hey, what are you doing right now? <laughs> Put him on the speaker actual. Phone. Speaker phone. No, I don't. Speakerphone. Okay, hold on. I'm going to put you on speakerphone because the boys want to hear you too. You're on yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Tell him he's on the podcast, dude. No, hold on. Can, ben, can you hear no, me? No, we don't tell him that. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. So I got you on I got you on speaker, speakerphone so the boys can hear you too. So okay. this is not, I guess we didn't know this till right now that this has happened more than once. Okay. You're on the podcast too, so don't yeah. say anything inappropriate. Don't tell people about your goat fucking, by the way. Whoa. So, okay. <laughs> That's just between Adam us. Adam comes in hot. So uh, I got this, I got an inbox from this gorgeous little girl and it's like a fucking blog dude it's literally it took me 15 minutes to read it to the boys and the whole thing is she's a fan of mind pump she found us when you came on the show way back when but your handsomeness stole her from our heart yeah and she want she wants me to try and connect to you, and she's asking for advice from me on how I can help her get to you without her seeming like a creep because all the women that constantly message you on your on your Instagram, how does she do yeah. that? How does she get to you to let you know that right. she could you guys potentially What do could, we do with all these girls? I had one too. Yeah, he had one too. Yeah. What's what's What the, are we supposed to do with all these I don't want to give her your cell phone number. I don't think you'd appreciate it. We're basically that. pimps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there she, like some kind of I waiting do, list? Or I wouldn't anything? do this to you like I wouldn't do this to you if I didn't think she was really cute. She's really cute. So okay. yeah, so okay. it's do I just screenshot her 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 Instagram and send over to you, or what, how do I? What's the best way to funnel these things? Yeah, yeah, dude. Just uh, if you can screenshot her Instagram and uh, have her send it to me, and I'll, I can reach out to her. Okay. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. Wow. See, he's see such that? a good guy. See, yeah. we told. What's we, our commission? Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want. To, yeah. Hey, so you're so you're single right now. I am currently single. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Woo! All right. Well. All right. I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna leave you. I'll leave you alone. But why don't you come by the studio and say hi this week? We're just kind of chilling this week. All right, sounds good. I'm going to do that. All right, brother. All right, man. Bye, Bye. Ben. Bye. All right, you guys. Love Bye. you. <laughs> he's such a nice guy that he's not, he doesn't even get mad. Yeah, yeah right? That's so good. You should, you should have told him. I already sent him, I already sent you your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> she'll, she'll be calling she'll be later. texting you right now. I'm going to tell her right now that she just got That's hooked great. up on the podcast. You see that? We have love for our pump heads, right? Yeah. He's I such think a good guy. Even Adam. if they love other people. Well, I, it's know, not like you don't do this for fame or to make people laugh on the podcast or to make fun of them. You did this purely to mm, help people out. That's yeah. it. Just a good guy. You know, like you know why? I used to love that I feel show. Good inside. Love connection. Love mm. connections. Love connections. Are you? Uh, what's his name? Chuck Woolery. Are you Woolery? Woolery. Yeah, Chuck Woolery. Right. Yeah, Chuck Woolery, right? Someone like that. Something like that. Right. Mm. I'm close. You know what? Close. Is your tongue? A, he used to go to the same library. Is your as tongue me. slightly paralyzed? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. I'm starting to realize it's something with your I tongue. Think you're right. Uh, I think uh, cannabis does that. Yeah, it's a little lazy. <laughs> yeah. You have trouble. <laughs> lazy. You have trouble yeah. like moving it. Uh, Katrina wouldn't say it's lazy. All right, honey. <laughs> Get the motherfucking bird. Hey, out. hold on a second. Wait, it's just wait, wait, oh, wait, oh, tell wait. the tell the people. We haven't even tell talked the about people this. why your beard looks so luxurious. Oh my god, it's out. We have a new uh, sponsor, Big Top Beard Company. Very excited about these guys. You know yeah. why we're excited about them? Because their shit is natural. <laughs> it's all natural, and it's fucking. Be- I put it on my beard, yeah. and my girlfriend just. 
sticks to my face. I'm so excited. Like I'm growing my beard again finally, and like my wife is so like on board with it. Is she for reals? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I've been training it. You've been too, having so. more sex lately, haven't you? <laughs> you bet your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's been on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> it works. Yeah, and it, yeah, there's like you, a manliness factor to it. Right? And this it's is a good man. gift for all you ladies to get your men. Yeah, it's true. Because this is like you don't like how his, his beard gets all scraggly and wiry and sticking out. That's what the whole beard this gets oil rid of the pube factor. And the wax is for so it smells good it's natural it's all natural and it gives you a nice it makes the beard look healthy <laughs> now we take and, that wax and we train those hairs to go where you want them to so go. so check this out uh, i read this uh, a while ago i wanted to know why like what is the theory behind why men grow beards and why most women don't i said most because i'm italian i've seen women with beards <laughs> And they say, and so they said the reason why men grow Coney beards, Island. there's a couple reasons that they think that anthropologists think we evolved to grow beards. Number one is to soften the blow from battle. So, and if you think about it, if you got a big old beard, number one, it makes it harder for someone to judge where your chin is. And number two, it may soften the blow from getting hit, right? Because men, of course, that's what we do, right? We fight each other because we're fucking idiots. Yeah. But here's the second main reason. A big, big, healthy beard is kind of like the feathers of a peacock. It demonstrates good health. I see. So if you have a big, big, luxurious, healthy beard, it means you're healthy. Yeah. It means you don't have like crazy, like you know, skin problems or health problems. You don't have mites. You don't have lice or anything like that. It sh- demonstrates that you have testosterone and that you're healthy. And this is why women are so attracted mm. to a healthy beard. And studies will show. A big beard, men with with good, healthy beards are perceived as better leaders and more assertive. It's a fact. Look it up. Wow. So there you go. Wow. Now we can bring on the uh, big top beard bird. Step right up, all you bearded men and all you bearded ladies. This quad is brought to you by Big Top Beard Company, whose all-natural beard oil products not only make your beard smell amazing, but feel amazing, too. Their organic essential oil blends transport you to manly places like the mountains, the desert, the sea, and beyond, all while encouraging a lot of beard nuzzling to boot. Buy it for yourself or as a gift for that special bearded someone at BigTopBeardCompany.com. Enter the discount code Mind Pump for 33% off at checkout. Our first question is from Kelsey Coaster. Is lifting enough cardio for health? I'm a power lifter. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Hold on a second. Fuck yeah. Hold on a second. I'm just picturing like the stereotypical power lifter. <laughs> like just a fucking, just a big, fat, just strong person. Rude. The, the, yeah. the Which, truth, you know what? If you want the answer, you should have watched my Insta story like three days ago. Like, because I was going up that fucking mission peak like a power lifter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you know, this is actually, this is a really good question because, um, I, I, when I first take somebody on, I actually eliminate all cardio. I don't care how old, how young. Um, I actually tell people I want them to like limit their movement when I first get that. Sounds crazy, right? Like the opposite. You hire a trainer and you think your trainer's going to kick your ass. I'm like, hey, guess what? Sit on the couch more while you're yeah. with me. But really, what I want to do is I want to find out kind of where their uh, their normal <clears throat> neat is, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I want to know. I want to know where 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 their BMR and their your their calorie maintenance level is at if they were not doing a ton of activity. That way we can kind of use cardio as a tool to counter extra calories or lean them out if they want to lean out or potentially help them bulk. So we, we need to find this good baseline. So at first I tell nobody, I tell nobody, I tell everybody not to do cardio for this reason. Now, cardio has other benefits than just losing or gaining weight too, though. So it's, it's exercise for your heart. That's well, here, the definition of it. Here's what people need to realize is that there is – exercise for health and longevity and then there's exercise for performance and this is true for all forms of exercise even lifting weights so if i'm going to lift weights purely for longevity and health i'm going to be focused solely on movement stability and mobility if i push myself to get stronger and stronger and stronger and hit prs and to build lots of muscle i am now moving past health and longevity i'm aiming for performance and i may in fact take away from longevity and health. So a power lifter 
for example, is no longer training for with with weights. They're no longer training with weights for health. They're training for maximum performance, right. which is going to take away from longevity because, again, you're maxing your body out. You're going to put more wear and tear on your body. Mm-hmm. You're going to stress your body out a little bit more. Now, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying understand that. Now, now with cardio, the same is true. Right. You can do cardio – for health and longevity, or you can do cardio for performance and endurance. And there's many forms of cardio. I mean, you guys mentioned neat, and you mentioned like long-term cardio. There's just many different forms, even lifting weights. You know, just like adding and increasing the amount of volume, increasing the amount of reps. You're going to get shortening your rest, cardiovascular elements in there. Um, yeah, but, like I dare you to do a set of 25 reps with barbell squats and not right. realize the cardio benefits from that. So, I mean it. It's all in like your lifestyle. Like, what what do you want to promote the most for your lifestyle? Are, are you gonna want to have the ability to get up and and run, you know, a far distance, or you know, are you just want to benefit uh, your strength and, and longevity? Like, these are all different approaches that you have to kind of like organize your your workouts accordingly mm-hmm. to to benefit the most. Yeah, maximal longevity and health uh, is really about um, frequent, uh, moderate. Activity. Yeah, that's, it. that's it. That's what the science says. The science does not say endurance athletes, bodybuilders, powerlifters, strength athletes, you know, or athletes in general are the ones that live the longest. <clears throat> it's just not. Now, why do we promote uh, training harder for better performance? Because I, we also believe that it's not just about longevity and health. It's also about enjoying your life. There's also that component, which is why I'll eat – cake sometimes and while I'll eat a burger eater. sometimes <laughs> because uh, there are more things that I get out of food aside from longevity and health. And sometimes it's enjoying the moment with friends and family and enjoying just the taste of the food. So, mm. and the same is true with exercise. So if you're doing it for health, do you need to do cardio? No. I mean, as long as you're walking and you're staying active and you're not just lifting weights, I think you're absolutely fine. If you want to do cardio for health, I mean, walk. Really, yeah. nothing beats it. Well, nothing think, beats walking. I think even that, but um, there's there's also there's also an element of just more movement. So more movement throughout the day. So we talk about neat, but think about how many things you could do to benefit your joints, to benefit like inactive muscles. There's like there's just a a, a, a cascade of of exercises in. in different mobility and, and different like types of flexibility and, and all these different pursuits that you could incorporate that uh, adds up to a lot more activity and, and movement throughout your day that's that's going to have the same benefit, if not more benefit, because now uh, you know, you're, you're a little bit more supported and you're, you're more mobile. Do you know what the bodies of in- extreme endurance athletes on the inside, what they look like when they get examined? They look... Not good. There's oh. lots of oxidative stress. The age of their heart uh, appears to be much older than the person's actual chronological age because of the the damage that they create with the oxidative stress because of the extreme nature of their sport. Anything you do to an extreme level uh, is going to have health detriments. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So again, if you're a power lifter and you're training for maximum performance and you're thinking about your health, just improve your neat and walk around. If you want to improve your powerlifting, cardio may help you a little bit as well. Um, not a lot of it, but I do think a little bit of cardio will help you just with improved mobility and improved cardiovascular Well, what health. would you recommend with that? I'd probably do more hit type style if you were trying to improve that. Yeah, I would do like one. You don't want long, long bouts of cardio. No, I do one hit session a week maybe, and then maybe like 30 minute walks every single day just to you know, keep them keep them moving and keep them healthy. Power lifters tend to, uh, and this is the stereotype, of course, but they tend to eat a lot of food. They tend to reduce activity. They tend to have you know mobility and joint issues because of the constant nature of their of pushing. Them. We just had a guest. Uh, you know, like for example, when we interviewed Lane Norton, who's been training as a power lifter for a long time. Lots of mobility issues and lots of stability issues because he's been so focused on. You know his extre- his pursuit of extreme. Lifting. Did he admit that though? I don't think he, admitted he did. He talked about that on our oh, podcast and how he's focusing more on on uh, he's a mobility. Physical therapist that's kind of guiding. Oh, him. that's right. Yeah, and, and and because it's the nature of this, it's the nature of the beast, right? It's the nature of the sport. So yeah. you're next, pressuring the hinges. Exactly. Next question. Healthy, happy, and free. How do you guys get out of a funk? Oh, 
Funky. Okay. Why would you want like to get out of being funk? funky? Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Tell us, Sal. Uh, how do I get out of a funk? Well, it'll funk you up. You know, it's interesting. I watched uh, that video. Uh, what's her name? Mel Robbins. Is that mm-hmm. her name? Mm-hmm. The one that she was on the. She had Tom a ten- Bilyeu. Yeah, she was on Tom Bilyeu's show, Impact Theory. Um, great interview. Sister of uh, Tony Robbins. No, and oh. she also had uh, a really good <laughs> damn t- uh, make TED a- talk relationship there and there was some um some kind of some cool stuff that she said that was a little mind-blowing one of the things that she talked about was how we tend to wait until we get the motivation to do things like god i just need to get motivated to exercise or i just need to get motivated to you know uh write that blog or do that edu- you know that extra education for my work or do that extra step to build my business and she said that it's bullshit. She said waiting for motivation is a horrible, horrible strategy because for the most part, you're never going to get it. It's not, they're not going to get this, this you know, instance of boom, oh my God, I'm so motivated. Now I want to do all these different things. Mm-hmm. Number one, that rarely ever happens. And number two, when it does happen, what do you do when that, that stroke of motivation goes away because at some point it does. If if you're relying on doing something or moving your butt or, you know, achieving things based on being motivated, at some point that motivation is going to wax and wane. And then what? Now that you've based all of your activity and, and you know, go get them attitude on motivation, now that that's gone, you're back in your funk and you're doing nothing again. And so mm-hmm. she said, don't wait for motivation. It's bullshit. Just do it. Uh, just go out and make yourself do it. And she has a strategy that she calls the five second rule, which is really interesting. Um, and I recommend watching, you know, her YouTube videos to learn more about it. But for me recently, this has been kind of a uh, kind of a game changer because I'm trying to, in my personal life, I'm trying to organize things on a completely different level than I've ever had to organize them because now I have this dual custody thing with my kids and they've, you know, in both households and now I'm managing school schedules and you know, when they're off of school and managing a business at the same time. And in the past, uh, those were things that, you know, at the time my wife did uh, all that stuff. And now I have to do a lot of myself. Just out of curiosity. It's just overwhelming. Can I, can I ask you while you're right there? Does, do you feel do you feel more compassion or less compassion? Or has it not changed your state at all with knowing that you have to take this on now? That was something that you didn't really worry as much about. Do you have? What do you mean? Compassion for what? For your ex. Uh, because we had a system. So do I definitely appreciate, I definitely appreciate what she did much more. Yeah. That's what, um, I, mean. that's what I was just curious. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's just, cause I know she hasn't been the easiest to handle all the time. Well, like, no, I, I mean, we can't, I mean, obviously whenever you're, you go through that process, I'm, I'm not easy either. Right. Yeah, Both right. of us are gonna be yeah, difficult, yeah. but I'll tell you what, when you, when you look at, I think, okay. So if you look at working out, right, like, Oh, I got to get motivated to exercise. The steps are pretty simple. <clears throat> Get up, move, and start just paying attention to your food. It's kind of simple, right? Mm. But it's so fucking hard to take those steps. And really, it's because we just don't take those steps. And the same thing for me, like getting organized with her schedules and stuff, all it took for me to do was get a calendar, meet with her, write things out, plan things out. This is what we do at this time. And that's all it took. But it was so hard to fucking do it because I was waiting for the motivation, Mm. which never came. And it felt like I was in a funk. And the reality is, all I had to do was say is realize I'm never going to get motivated, so I just got to do it. Once I started doing it, it was easy. And then the, the irony of it was is I got out of the funk. Yeah. So, I, I, I mean, I don't know exactly how that translates, yeah. um, but for me, well, that's worked really well. First step, I mean, getting in a funk, like just acknowledging your state, that you're in a funk. Like me, for me, like I know because I'll get feedback from, from my wife or, you know, from my kids that I pick up on and I can see – how it's affecting everybody around me. So I guess my gauge a lot of times is, is how that's projecting, you know, how everybody is responding to me. I realize, Oh shit, you know, I'm in a, a state that I need to change. And so like, uh, just to, to, to pick up on that is, is tough a lot of times because, um, you're focused on certain things, you're focused on certain goals or, or things around you, but you, you don't realize like you're, energy and your mood is affecting everybody around you and you're you're literally in a funk that you need to dig out of and you need to, you need to address it and, and and separate yourself from it and then re rewire you know the, the way that you're thinking about everything in front of you 
And uh, maybe it's stepping out. Maybe it's taking some time off, the, some reflection, some meditation. Some For me, it's time. It's space. It's creating more space for myself to think and reflect on uh, what, I, what I'm presenting and, and the energy I'm bringing into the table. And then after that, it's like I can – I can work towards, you know, being, having a different approach. Yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> I think it, it, there's, I have levels of funk <laughs> and based off the levels of funk yeah. Hell yeah. would, uh, would dictate what I do. So if I'm in just like a, like a little funk, like it, and what could cause a little funk is, um, you know, work, like work stress. It's mm-hmm. just, uh, you know, whatever. It's been a rough week, just a lot of bu- busy and, you know, maybe money isn't flowing the way it was flowing the week before, whatever. Like if I got like a work funk and it's just like one aspect of my life, I feel like I'm in a funk. Then what I do is I try not to dwell on that one thing that's causing. And I, and I kind of shift my energy into other things that make me happy and that I enjoy doing like for working out or doing stuff with my partner or, you know, doing something related to sports or there's a lot of things I like to do reading, like all these other things that I enjoy that give uh, joy to my life. And because I have one aspect that is creating funk in my life, I'm not going to allow it to bleed into the rest. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm almost going to just like almost ignore it. Like, you know what? Like I'm, is it more of this is a, a mental thing. I'm allowing this to put me in a funk. It's an uncontrollable situation. There's, or there's something that I could, can no longer do about it. All I can do now is do a better stuff going forward. So instead of dwelling on it and being in a funk, I'm going to shift my mind over into things that I enjoy or that I'm really good at. Right. So I used to tell clients like this, like when your home life is, you know, a wreck or like that, well then put some good energy into your work, man. Like put your energy into your craft or, you know, Hey, put some good energy into, uh, you know, sell, uh, growing yourself and growth and, and working out and bettering yourself. So I, I shift my energy into other places that, uh, make my life more whole or better and not allow that one aspect. Now, sometimes the funk is so bad. Everything's funky. You know what I'm saying? Like there's business is funky, relationships, funky, your money's funky. You feel fat, you feel funky. Like everything's funky, fat and funky. If I feel like overwhelmed with the funk, yeah. Like that's when yeah. it's you just got defunct. It's it's you know, time to get the funk out of town. Get the funk. <laughs> that's true. Get that's, the funk out of here. That's that's what I do. So yeah, literally, so they, so literally they just get overwhelmed with the funk. Yeah. yeah so yeah. literally, this is <laughs> that shit will funk you up. This is literally what I do. Is um, and what I have an amazing partner. So Katrina is is incredible. She normally senses when I get this funky. And she'll say, "Listen, uh, let's let's get out of here." And a lot of times, you know, we've we've been together. Let's for, start getting jazzy. We've uh, we've been together for six years, so I don't have to like. Even she feels it, like she can sense it, and she knows that like all this stuff going on. She knows if I've been missing my workouts and got a lot of stress at work, and so she can see that coming. And then she'll just be like, "Oh, by the way, like." we're flying to Cabo this weekend or, Oh, we're taking off to Southern California or, Oh, we're going up North to the mountains or she'll have a trip just like, and it doesn't have to be an elaborate, crazy thing. Sometimes it is, but a lot of times it's just to get out of town Mm -hmm. and disconnect from all the stuff that's here that is causing me to feel funky. So I find what do you guys do? uh, What are some hallmark characteristics that you could identify in yourselves that happen when you're in that? Funk? That funk, yeah. Like, uh, what are things I'm, you tend I'm, to do? I'm short. I'm short yeah. with people. So you get more irritable. Yeah, I'm, irritable. I'm definitely short with people because I feel like <clears throat> I take um, I take others' feelings into consideration a lot when I speak to people and I feel like I'm always, uh, I can be a people pleaser sometimes. And then when I get in a funk, I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to say what's on my mind. It probably, probably, and may offend people or it may sting a little. And it's like, it, I'm just irritable and I don't care. I'm going to speak my mind. Who cares how, well, how it comes out? And well, that's whatever inside. created the funk is what all the, what consumes me. You know, it just becomes this like, this horse blinder effect where mm-hmm. like, I can't even hear you. You know, like I like if you're talking to me, I can't hear you because I'm so obsessed and thinking about why this is, you know, causing me this this state. And uh, so that's why I have to I have to communicate it and I have to tell people around me, look, you know, like this is what happened or whatever it is. And like once I identify it, it's like, okay, I'm working through this and I have to tell people around me I'm working through this because I'm just I'm so fucking like focused on it. See, I I've, uh, for me, like there's a couple things that I notice. Uh, one of them is. And I started to put words to it because it was hard for me to to explain. 
and I've had a lot of practice uh, the last few years dealing with a funk. I've been in a fucking long, long-term funk for a little while now. And one of the things is I start to understand that the way you view things in your life is you, you're looking through a filter of some sort. And imagine you have sunglasses on or glasses on. And on those glasses, you could there's a knob that you could switch to positive filter, negative filter, sad filter, you know, whatever. And when I'm in my funk, I notice that that filter becomes negative. So anything, even things that don't have to do with the funk, I tend to uh, view in more of a negative way. Like, you know, I, I'm at the store and this lady, you know, went in front of me on, on her shopping cart and I'm just looking at her in a more negative way or, you know, the way somebody said something to me, you know, normally I wouldn't take it personal or I wouldn't let it bother me, but now it's bothering me. And it just becomes this filter that I see things through. And if I if I can, and this is the hard part, it's hard to identify. It's hard to say like, oh shit, I'm seeing things through this fucking shitty filter. Once I do it, um, it makes a big difference because then I can, you know, because then I can see things a little bit differently. And then the second thing is that I get stuck a lot. Like I'll get stuck on social media or I'll get stuck reading something or it's almost like I'll get frozen in uh, inactivity or inaction. I'm busy. I'm doing stuff, but I'm not actually doing things that are productive or helping me. It's like I'm in this kind of cycle. And I, I, I was watching this video where I don't remember who it was, but they were talking about the difference between um, stress, like normal stress and suffering. And they were saying how, you know, stress is a motivator. So something will happen, a light will go off, and you'll say, okay, I need to do something about this particular stressful situation. Suffering is constantly cycling that thought in your mind over and over and over and over again, even though it's not benefiting you. And so now you're suffering. You're just constantly suffering about this particular thing. For example, if I have, I'll use an easy example. If I have a, a, a presentation tomorrow in front of a thousand people, I'm going to get a little bit stressed about it, right? And that's a motivator. Like, okay, I'm, it's going to help me prepare because I'm stressed. Okay, I got to get ready. I got to <coughs> review my all my what I'm going to talk about. I want to make sure I do a good presentation. But if I, if I constantly think about the fact that I may bomb or it may be terrible or I'm going to be nervous on stage and I cycle that over and over and over, now I'm stressing and it's not serving me. And so, I, so learning how to separate that is, uh, wow, that's a very powerful tool. Like, am I stressing because it's, it's helping me do something that's productive? Or am I just suffering now? Am I letting myself suffer? Or am I allowing myself to suffer? And suffering, nobody should suffer. It just doesn't benefit anybody. So just a couple things that I've, you know, that I've been reading about that I think have helped quite a bit. Next up, comic fitness. Is Maps White only for when you don't have access to a gym? No, not at all. You know, we should just stand alone. You know, when we first did it, Mm -hmm. we really were trying to uh, counter all the shitty, you know, at home programs that were out there. In our own fashion, how we would. Yeah, how we would structure that in a more beneficial way. Yeah, we were, we actually said, okay, we were, we talk shit about all these at home programs. Well, what would we do about yeah, what it? Would if we, we do if, different. If yeah. I was going to train somebody who never went to the gym, they just wanted to work out at home. Like, what would I do? Well, that was the main reason. But I mean, you could take that. Like, I actually just went through a little uh, stint where I was just running. I was in a gym doing maps wide. So you don't have to be at home. It doesn't have to be a non access. It's a body weight. That's what it's designed. It's designed to be a body it's, weight. So it's Maps Anywhere is the actual name. The color is white. That's what we refer to it, white, um, just so people know. But pro- the most uh, the comments that we get for all of our programs, the one that I'm most proud of is Maps Anywhere because oh, it's, really? it is because that and Maps Performance, but, but because those are the ones <laughs> that we get the most comments from trainers on. Hmm. Like I've gotten a lot of comments from personal trainers. I would say Prime. Really? Oh, well, yeah, yeah I guess you're right, because that's really, I guess before Prime, right? Because Prime well, is so different. that's out of the box. Yeah, yeah, that's out of the box. But this is just like exercise programming. Yeah. We've had a lot of trainers tell us, like, I've never seen a no equipment program programmed so well. And uh, I, I do want to touch on the benefit of closed chain kinetic movements. So open chain movements are when you're moving the weight, you know, the weight that you're moving is free. So like I'm like I'm doing a, a, like a bench press, right? So my hands are moving away from my body 
And a closed chain movement is my is my hands are fixed or my feet are fixed, and it's my body that's moving. So like a push up versus a, a bench press, and they both have their benefits. And if you don't do either one, you're missing out a lot. Mm-hmm. And so maps anywhere really the benefit of it is if you're a hardcore, super consistent uh, fitness enthusiast who's been working out in a gym for a long time, you'll get blown away by going through a cycle of maps anywhere. You'll get blown away by when you go back to lifting your weights. You will feel a different connection to the yeah. weights. It's the connection factor, right? It, it, it's that fact that now like your body, uh, it, it goes through this process. And we added tension exercises and we added ways to amplify uh, this response that um, you know makes it more challenging even. And uh, there, there's elements in there that we threw that were addressing posture. And so if you can't hold your body in these specific positions, it really gets exposed. And so um, all these things, like we kind of added in, now step away from the weights. Like what does your body look like as far as the movement and uh, what kind of uh, response you can get from your body without – you know, relying on the weight to provide that stimulus. Well, wouldn't you guys say that a lot of that is the, it's the, re, what's required of the central nervous system because mm-hmm. you can cheat a lot of that on a machine, right? I can see if I sit down on a machine yep. and I do like a chest press machine or whatever, it's, I can relax. It eliminates a lot of momentum. Yeah. Let's right. be honest. And, and when you're, you know, so we'll use chest press because that's what I started with here, right? So I'm sitting down on a machine and I'm doing a chest press. I could have my, my legs all sprawled out. I could be slouching in there and I could be chest pressing away and, and working. Well, when you do a body weight exercise to emulate a chest press, that would be like a push up. And when you do a push up, your your all your your hands, your toes, everything's connected. Like your 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 pelvic, your core, like everything's having to stabilize. Like it requires a huge amount of attention from your central nervous system to have all these muscles firing, stabilizing, and working together to to perform the same type of a movement to get chest to work, right? Mm-hmm. So that's I think that's why it's so mind-blowing for a lot of people because if you have a gym membership let's be honest with ourselves a lot of the exercises we're probably doing are sitting down on a bench and doing exercises Mm -hmm. or sitting in a machine and doing that you're isolating certain areas you know where whereas you go through this program now there's a like massive carryover because now you've lit up all kinds of new ways to stabilize Mm -hmm. support your body going into that same exercise where you may be laying down or sitting down it's a totally different skill it's a completely different skill and like we've talked about many times on the podcast, training new skills for the body uh, results in better adaptations. I mean, if you get really good at doing lat pull downs, go do some pull ups and watch what happens. I mean, you get really good at overhead press, get really good at uh, handstand put you know push ups where you're upside down, you're pressing your, your body up in the air. The functionality of being able to manipulate your body in space is in. Incredible. I mean, if you can get really good at body weight movements, you will build a shit ton of muscle, by the way. There's a myth that you build, it's not, they're not as good of, of muscle builders, which I think is false. In fact, I think you can build a tremendous amount of muscle without any weights whatsoever. You can also build a tremendous amount of muscle without ever doing body weight exercises. But the most amount of muscle, the most functional movement that you'll ever get is when you're able to combine the two. Yeah. And, and, and I really, and this yeah. is one of those things where, Again, people get in their camps. You know, you've got the guys yeah. and girls who are super body weight oriented with rings and mm-hmm. pull up bars mm-hmm. and, you know, all, all this body weight stuff and gymnastic type exercises. And then you've got the guys and girls that do all the lifts, you know, lift all the weights and deadlifts and overhead presses and dumbbells and barbells. And for some reason, they, you know, it's like my way's better. No, my way's better. And it's like, whoa, you guys, like fucking, yeah. you can both. There's benefits to both and even more benefit when you combine them. When you combine them, you get incredible results. And so the ideal way that I would recommend people use Maps Anywhere is as a bridge. Mm-hmm. I think it's the best bridge program that's out there. So if you're doing Maps Anabolic or Maps Aesthetic or your own program and you want to bridge to a new program, let's say you want to go from – you know, one type of body part split to a completely different type of adaptation. Maybe it's more strength training, a five by five or one of our maps programs in between two try maps anywhere and maps anywhere. The cool thing about it too, it's just a short, it's a relatively short cycle, right? How long was the total cycle? I believe it was two, two week phases, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I think so you're, you're looking at one month 
a one-month bridge. So I challenge you to do this. If you're working at a gym and you've been working out very consistently, don't even change your routine. In fact, this is what you do for one month, for four weeks, do maps anywhere. Go back to your old routine and see how you feel. Watch what happens. Well, this is also, I want to remind people why you're ta- talking about this right now. Just recently, Doug has now, so we've been doing this 30 day of coaching that, you know, you sign up for, it's free, you can get it right on the website, and every day you get dripped a single topic. Well, you know, one of the things that uh, we just went back and did is, even though it's designed to you know, kind of educate you over 30 days, now you'll have complete access to all 30 days immediately when you first sign up for this. And what's really beneficial about that is now you're going to get this glossary and you'll have all these topics. So maybe you feel like you're well-versed in protein, carbs, or fats, but then when you get into mobility or you get into body weight exercises or you get into central nervous system, which we talk about all these things, and you'll be able to highlight and click right on that and go like, oh, I want to learn more about that. And then it, within that will be all the videos or podcast episodes where we've talked talked specifically about that in detail. So if you're not signed up for that, it's completely free. You just go to the website, mindpumpmedia.com, and then there'll be a pop-up. You just opt in. Yeah, you opt right in, name, email, and then you guys will get all that information. It's completely free. So make sure you guys take advantage of that. Fitness at large. How should someone who's on gear change their workout? Yeah, gear. You know, this gear. is some explaining what gear is because a lot of people don't know. Like <laughs> yeah, it's kind gear. of a, a, uh, steroids. Okay. Someone who's taking right. anabolic steroids. How should they change their Not workouts? Just like a shreds bag. So here's the thing with anabolic steroids. Uh, do they work? Yes. Um, do they change your body on such a fundamental level that now you need to do completely different uh, workouts? No. No. Uh, the same rules apply. The difference is. You now uh, can do m- more. You could just do more, more it's workouts, like, more weight, more. It's like pl- playing bowling with the bumper things. Yeah, it's like bowling mm. with the bumper things. It's still bowling. Yeah, you still. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, if you throw a strike, you're more likely to hit strike. pins. Yeah, yeah, but you just you know you can get away with some shit. You get away with a lot yeah, more. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, because I see a lot more. What are those called bumper rails? Is that what it's called? Bumper Taylor? rails. Yeah. Taylor. Bumper rails. <laughs> God, he doesn't even listen to us. He yeah. doesn't care. He doesn't fuck care. You, what the fuck you in here for? He's, he's, huh? he's doing something else. <laughs> yeah, it's bumper like bumper rails, right? Dude, That's don't pick is. on T Dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I he's feisty. You just you get a lot. You get uh, away with a lot more. So yeah. this is why we always recommend if you plan on taking anabolic steroids, one of the best things you could do. And if your goal is to obviously, if you're getting on steroids, you want to build <laughs> maximum muscle. Here's the best thing you could do: perfect your routine on your natural body. Yes. Yes. Then take anabolics. Yes, yes, and yes. And then watch what happens. Yeah. This is what I, this what I tell you what, when I uh, did the whole competing thing and then I was doing uh, online coaching, of course I'm going to attract a lot of high level competitors or guys that want to be high level competitors. And the first thing they all ask is, what, what's the dose? What, bro? yeah, what testosterone do I take? How much? All this stuff. And every one of them, I tell all of them, listen, like, one thing I will do is I will always I'll answer whatever questions you have about that and and by I'll take first of all I'm not a doctor so I'm tell you that get your blood work done that's important but if you have not taken the time to train yourself and get yourself in the best shape of your life without it first don't do that don't do that it's just going to hide your shitty diet and routine man not only that but it's also setting yourself up with a very bad connection with the steroids and that, like, if I'm like, I'm all a fan for you doing whatever you want to do to your body for sure. Like, I think everybody should have, I think it should, I don't think it should be illegal. That's my opinion. So I think if you want to try it and you want to do it, then do it. But I think that you should do your due diligence first. I think that you should go through the process of learning how to get yourself in shape completely natural. That way, when you introduce something synthetic, you can actually see how much of that it's helping you. Otherwise, if you decide you're going to go in this hardcore training routine and you're going to go on this diet that so-and-so gave you and you're going to take this steroid cycle that someone gave you, and then it's like, okay, well, which one of those is really doing most of the change in your body? And you won't really know how to tweak each one of them individually to get more. So you first figure that out naturally. And then when you add the dose of testosterone, testosterone is just going to take it all to the next level. It's like you otherwise, like Sal was saying, you can get away with so much. You could have really shit programming, getting pretty decent results because you're on testosterone because you you don't have to pay attention to recovery time. You don't have to do all the best exercises. You could just stimulate, but you're going to be, you're going to see strength gains going up just because you're lifting weights and you're on testosterone, you know, but 
you won't know if that's because you got good programming. You know, here's one piece of advice I'll give you uh, when if you're on gear is don't be careful with this. You don't get addicted to the pump in the gym. And I, let me explain why I say that. When you're on anabolics uh, and you lift weights in the gym, you will have the most amazing, amazing pumps. pumps you've ever had in your life. Like, and they're addicting. Like you'll work out, you'll lift, and it doesn't matter what you do, you're gonna get a silly skin tight pump and it's going to feel amazing and it's going to skew your understanding of the effectiveness of your workout to the point where you'll get addicted to that feeling and then you'll go in the gym and then your goal is just to get the best pump possible and then you waste a lot of time on machine exercises and cable exercises and squeezing as much blood as possible in the muscle and now don't get me wrong the pump does have a role in building muscle but if you get stuck there you'll you'll you'll, you'll plateau in a big way and i see a lot of juice heads uh, stuck in this process where you see them in the gym and they're big, you know, they're muscular, but they don't change. Their bodies don't change. And you watch their workouts and it consists of a lot of these pumping type movements where they'll get the cable and they'll squeeze one side for the cable crossover and they'll do the sideways hammer strength. And they'll, it's all about getting this fucking amazing pump, but it's just, it's a, uh, be careful because that signal do you know you're getting on gear isn't necessarily i'm glad you went this way so i don't know if i shared this on the podcast or not but i was somebody who chased the pump like crazy i'm also somebody who's taken plenty of testosterone and when i when i was doing that one of the things that used to always frustrate me was god i felt so amazing when i was in the gym when i was all pumped up you know, I literally looked like I tripled in size. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. Like that was night and day difference when I was, no, remember too, I'm tall, long, lanky, have big muscle bellies, but I was like chasing the pump so much and I was so adapted to that, that I would, I would get this massive pump, but then I would deflate afterwards and it really pissed me off until I broke that cycle. I didn't realize how important it was to be out of that. And what I mean by that is when I started strength training more and the heavy singles and doubles and like training where I didn't feel all pumped up afterwards, I built way more muscle. And in, in return, now I walk around with, there's less of a difference between my pump and how I am now. I've literally, now, because I've built so much strength and built so much more muscle through lifting heavy weight and singles and not worrying about the pump so much, but that was a very hard thing for me to break. Mm -hmm. When you've been chasing the pump- It's for, fucking addicting, man. Yeah, well, it is. Especially when you're on anabolics. Well, and it, and it, it, it creates a new relationship, right? Because you get these- when you do so many reps and you're pump, 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 like you've done five, six sets of this and that's all you're chasing, you get sore afterwards, you have this massive blood rush in the muscles, you look awesome because you're all filled up. So you tend to chase that all the time. Well, like anything else we talk about, you do that for four, six, eight, 10 weeks, 12 weeks. You've been doing that for the last six months training this way. Your returns are diminishing less and less and less and less strength and muscle gains from that all you're doing is just pumping up all these muscles and what's the first step that people take when that starts to happen add more testosterone add more test and then they get a little bit bigger and they get a little bit more of a pump and this is why you see these physique competitors who you're not that big physique competitors are not that big and they're taking grams of testosterone yeah. a week. Ridiculous. Like silly amount, more than Arnold used to take. Ridiculous. Way more than the guys in the 70s used I, to take. When I, when I went into the show where it was my second show, I placed worse than my first show, and they told me I was too shredded the first show. So then I thought, okay, well, I can get bigger on this next show because I'm like too lean, right? So I added, I added more testosterone, and I went up to 400 milligrams of testosterone. And the Wait, so that so was that? Let me ask you this, if, if you don't mind going into that, because I know there's a lot of people who compete who really want to hear these details. Was that the highest dose? Yeah. that you'd ever that you had taken. Yeah, I'd Not, I mean when you competed. Yeah, when you were younger, you did that. Stupid, oh yeah, when I was younger, I did way more stupid shit. Yeah. yeah, that's what fucked up my testosterone. Yeah, so you did you did 400 milligrams of testosterone. Yeah, so which is. <laughs> competitors right now are listening are like that's it well well let's put it into perspective that actually to me i think is even really because i'm on trt so like i'll every two weeks right now i do 150 milligrams of testosterone that keeps me like normal mm -hmm. that keeps that keeps me like a 600 to a thousand you know free test like yeah. that's i'm not like uh so that's so at 150 every two weeks so then when i was competing i bumped that up to 250 milligrams in a week Mm -hmm. And then when I had that after that first show, I thought, okay, I, I can add more so I could be bigger, right? And then I went up to 400. When I went up to 400, the judges were like, whoa, we were just way too big for this. So I had to I had to pull back. 
But the point I'm trying to make is that this whole time I'm I'm program I'm going through our programs right I'm programming I'm training that so I'm getting every every you know every three months and every time I'm jumping in a new show I'm putting size and muscle mass on and it wasn't because I kept increasing the doses it was because I was because you had good programming yeah good programming good diet everything else good training everything going along with it and you know so I had to go scale back so then after that I never even when I got to the professional level I never had to go over 350 milligrams of testosterone to reach this level of size and if anything I had to be more careful on how much it took from getting too big so a lot of these guys in the men's physique world they keep pumping more testosterone to try and reach this size of a pro and it's like dude I'll tell you right now I and I have poor genetics I do not have bodybuilder genetics. Those that see me right now, you see what my body wants to look like. This is a very normal look for me, like this lean basketball player look. Like that's my body type. It takes a lot of work and effort for me to put the mass on. So the amount of testosterone that I needed to assist that is not very much whatsoever. So right away, if you're a men's physique guy, and, you, and I'll tell you, even if you think you have shit de- genetics, like I know for sure I do, if you're doing 500 milligrams of testosterone more, you're way more than way you need. More. And you people, need to address the other issues. And people don't realize that they actually start to saturate their receptor sites and uh, downregulate them. So you'll see these guys who are on grams of gear and aren't getting anything out of it anymore. Yeah. Um, and, and then you'll see other guys who will go off, go back on, and it's like, boom, oh my God, I'm responding a lot to these steroids again. People don't realize like there's definitely a science to using anabolics, but do not uh, disregard your programming because in the hierarchy of things that are important, exercise programming is above anabolic steroids. Way, way it's above. Way above. I it. think it's why I'm so passionate about this and what we do because it's not because I'm I'm sitting over here judging others at all. It's fuck, man. I did it. You know, I went through that. Like I. I was the same way too, and I thought that, oh, I need to take more and more and more of this, and that's what got me in trouble with now my testosterone shit. Now I have testosterone of a fucking 60-year-old because as a 20-year-old, I was taking this gear thinking that that was going to... The funny thing too is you took, when you were younger, uh, you know, when you when you killed your, your natural testosterone, you took way higher doses, well, and you didn't even come close to the size of muscularity that you had you know, recently with way, way lower doses. Oh, way, 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 way less and way more. But that was because it took years and years of me piecing that together. That, to understand oh, that. Yeah, holy shit, do, there's more Do you to think this. the gear, uh, when you were uh, when you were doing this as a kid, you think just comp- it just slowed down your learning process when it came to programming? Oh, absolutely. Because th- even then as a young kid, the reason why I would come on and off, on and off all the time was because and that's why why I say those the things that I say is not because I'm fucking some outsider looking in. I fucking went through all this. Mm-hmm. Like you think you start to connect the like bet because okay, if you're somebody who has okay programming, so remember I'm a trainer, so I think I got good programming. You, know? yeah. you, got, you got so let's just say you're you're an average Jane or Joe, or maybe you're even a trainer, and you got you think you're you're pretty good at programming. You know pretty much about nutrition. You know where your protein intake needs to be. So you think you know a lot about all that stuff. And then you slap gear on there, and then you get to a size you've never been before. And so and then you come off, and then you shrink back down. And then so now you start to connect like, oh, man, if I ever want to look that way. I have to be on this. I got to be on gear. And then you're like, fuck, I really. And you remember what it feels like to be on it. You fuck, you fuck like a 20-year-old. You feel amazing. All your muscle bellies are filled up. You got veins in your dick. Like, you feel awesome, right? It's like <laughs> you walk you walk in, and like testosterone just come, bleeds off of you, and women come falling. It's just amazing. So mm. you become very addicted. <laughs> we should yeah. sell testosterone. <laughs> Veiny. <laughs> You become, Check the show notes. For- <laughs> you you become addicted to that feeling, yeah. and and then and you connect that feeling that that level of size and everything to the testosterone. When you'd be surprised how far you can get all naturally. You'd be more than surprised. You'd be shocked if you just dialed in your fucking programming. I have a friend who I've known for a very long time, and he, you know, he's been running gear since we were kids, on and off. And, you know, we were talking back and forth and he's like, dude, he goes, my legs are fucking huge. And he showed me a picture and his legs look ridiculous. And I'm like, whoa, what are you doing? Did you, did you go on more gear? Like what's going on? And he goes, no, he goes, I'm squatting three days a week. Like you said. And it's like, 
just a simple like yeah. ad frequency, and his legs have grown bigger. Imagine that than he's ever been. And Doug, Doug, when he came to me as a client, he was not an inexperienced lifter. In God, fact, I would love to throw Doug on some testosterone. <laughs> no, dude, he would he would fucking out. He Can would, we do that? He'd make us look silly. Uh, we won't tell him. We'll just put it in his his, his milk. Adam's like that little horn devil guy that's yeah. on your right shoulder. <laughs> just do you know what I mean? And then just yeah. sprinkle some testosterone. Doug came hey, to me. Man. Hey man, Exper- do it. he was experienced. He'd followed the classic bodybuilder programming <laughs> consistently. You guys know Doug, how meticulous he can be. Yeah. He did body for life. He did body parts. Well, those are the flip. best clients for all that He stuff. did everything, yeah. everything. And he came to me and literally said to me, I have bad muscle building genetics. He said, I have poor muscle building genetics. Now, if you saw his before and after, after lifting with me for about a year and a half or two years, you would not fucking think that. And in fact, as a trainer who's trained thousands of people, I can tell you right now, Doug does not have terrible genetics for muscle building. He's got better than average muscle building genes, but he had no fucking idea because his programming was not ideal. And then all of a sudden, you know, at the age of, I think it was 48 or 49 when we took those after pictures, you know, six pack and all muscular and everything like that. It makes a huge difference. So, I mean, moral of the story is like learn how to really train your body first and eat right first well, it's just, go on gear and it's like magic it's just like what, the other day we had a Q&A and I kind of ranted on somebody who you know fell off of their diet when they're getting ready to compete and I'm like if you have a problem with binging and you can't stick to a diet like you have no reason to compete mm-hmm. if you can't diet yourself down and get in the best shape of your life naturally you have no business on gear that's how i look at that you should not Period. be you should not be trying to drive a high performance vehicle when you're still learning how to drive the current one you're in right now so master that and then hey if you fucking you're you're down to do something crazy like that and you want to and you want to drive something that fast then do it but otherwise you're just silly you're never going to win the race exactly that way. Look, if you go to mindpumpmedia.com, you can opt in for free for our 30 days of coaching. Uh, there's a new topic every single day. And like Adam was saying, you now get all of it on day one. We know there's a lot of you guys who like to binge learn. Well, now you can do that. You opt in. We'll give you all 30 days right off the bat. And we're always adding to it. And in fact, talking about anabolic steroids, I'm wondering if we should add a topic or, or, mm. or add that to the 30 days you know, where we talk about uh, it's like anabolics. 30 days and chill. Yeah. And you know, uh, uh, binge. It's free. You get on there and you do it. Also, if you want to ask us a question that we answer on our on our Q&A episodes like this one, you go to our Instagram page. We post up uh, a little meme there. That's where you ask your questions. You make sure to, to hashtag Qua, Q-U-A-H. And there's a good chance we'll answer your question on our show. Lastly, if you want uh, good information on fitness or coupon codes or other cool stuff, you can follow our personal pages. Mine is Mind Pump Sal. Adam's is Mind Pump Adam. And Justin's is Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.